What advice would you give to students who are interested in a career in aviation? Uh, I would say stay passionate. Go for your goal and, and look for different options. So aviation is not always about being a pilot though. Yeah. That's fine. I'd agree with that. Got the dream, live the dream. Yeah, leave no stone unturned to try to get what you want to do. And also, if you're interested in aviation, go to the airport, go and meet someone at a flying training school. Uh, ring up the, the military careers officer. Uh, ring up and talk to someone in an airline to see what happens. Uh, if you have a track record of showing interest, you're more likely to get ahead. For example, when you go to an interview, one of the interview questions you'll be asked if you're trying to apply for the military or trying to apply for an airline, you'll probably get asked, what's the last thing you read about in the newspaper or you read about on social media about the airline or about the military department? So they're asking to see if you're interested enough to do your own research. Yeah. And there's nothing centre to keep going because there's going to be great demand for pilots coming up. And really uh, being inundated with training and questions. Yeah. Um. What are the job prospects like in the sector in the next 10 years for the aviation industry? <laughs> Pretty good. Very high. Very mm -hmm. high. Uh, there's a worldwide demand for pilots at the moment. Not so much perhaps in Australia, but throughout Asia and throughout Africa. China Southern Airlines, for example, is flying to Australia now. They're recruiting expatriate air force, uh, extract, expatriate pilots. Uh, they've currently got 150. They've told us that they want 1,000 expatriate pilots in a year and a half of flying. Probably can't expect to sit um, in Brisbane or the Sunshine Coast, yeah. but you know, the chances are that your qualifications are going to have to go elsewhere. But then that's part of a big adventure, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a good question, is flying dangerous? Is there like any dangerous aspects to it or is it mainly just really small things that could go wrong? Okay, probably the most dangerous aspect of flying is the pilot. So if you're flying yourself, and I like to fly myself, I normally feel safer than when I'm sitting down the back as a passenger. That said though, the way the statistics work, your drive to the airport to park in the car park is more dangerous than the flight you're about to go on. Used to be a uh, posters on all the uh, briefing room walls. I can't actually accurately recall, but it was something like this: the sky, like the sea, is not inherently dangerous, but is very unforgiving of any error, unwishes, or carelessness. So it's up to us. Someone says it's up to the pilot. Mm -hmm. We talk about in our profession that it's that it's long periods of boredom interrupted by a tiny moment of sheer terror every so often. And as a pilot, actually, it's good to be bored. Have you guys ever heard of the Titanic that yeah. sunk? Captain E.J. Smith, I used to show this quote in Sea Room Courses, and it's a quote from a sea captain called E.J. Smith, and it's in, in my entire career, nothing's ever happened, nothing's ever gone wrong, the weather's never been bad, I've had a wonderful career, and he's the person that hit the iceberg and sunk the Titanic. Um, what is the most interesting aspect of your job? The most interesting aspect of my job? I get to fly anywhere in the world without leaving the country. <laughs> I operate simulators, so the Super Hornets and the 737 simulator that we have. So I can step on in that, that little office and I can be anywhere in the world in a blink of an eye makes the other guys jealous, they need their passports to go flying somewhere, I can just jump on board. Aviation has changed. I've seen great changes in aviation. And uh, when I first started off, you know, it was just a, a joy to fly, and it still is. You feel free, you can get up, um, apart from all the travel and that. Um, but lately now, with, as we were just talking about danger, everything is is everything's got to be structured and standardised because one captain is going to be flying with different first officers and vice versa and the right hand's got to know what the left hand's doing. If everyone's doing it differently, okay, not as much fun. Oh, well, doing it differently is fun, yes, but um, more dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I probably think the most interesting thing in our profession is that nothing is actually static. There's change all the time. 
there's new technology, there's, there's new things to do, there's new challenges and there's new demands. And, and what I thought I knew five years ago wouldn't be enough to do what I do today because everything's changed. Yep. Yeah. What is your current role in your job? My current role? Yeah. So, base manager at Airways Aviation in Brisbane. We have a new simulator airline training centre. Here in the centre where we train pilots to take their next step into getting into the airline. So we do the advanced training for pilots so after they've got their CPL. Okay, I'm the uh, lead instructor on the Boeing 717. Uh, it's my responsibility to make sure all the, the courseware Everything is, is up to date um, to keep up with the knowledge of the aeroplane and to train other instructors on the uh, aeroplane. Also, I'm involved with quality assurance, so it's uh, uh, my responsibility to make sure that, that we everything is here to in the Boeing's uh, quality manual, and that's fairly specific, and also standards that I deal with, with the regulatory, which is dealing with CASA. Okay, and, um, so that's wearing a few hats, but very, very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the moment I still fly. I fly the A330 for Virgin, uh, but I also train on it and I also check on it. I'm also a manager on that aircraft and at the moment I'm seeing in a role where I look after all the training and all the checking and all the standards for all Virgin Australia are pilots. Um, what made you interested in a career in aviation? <laughs> as I said, you know, I remember as a, a young boy, sort of being probably five or six, and hearing the aeroplane flying over, uh, coming in early morning in the darkness to deliver the papers to Rockhampton. Later on, I was going to be play Davis Cup tennis for Australia, but that never eventuated. And I'd be out, and the Rockhampton suffered a lot of fog. It's in a bowl with mountain hills around it and I'd be up hitting a tennis ball against the wall of the house and hearing the DC-3s droning around over the top waiting for them. Yeah. How come they can know where they are and I can't see them? And it just became an obsession to fly. Yeah, I wasn't certain what I was going to do in high school, so I wasn't. Uh, and some friends of mine thought it would be great to join the Air Force and become a pilot. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So at that stage I wasn't actually that passionate about flying then. But I fell into that role and then I thought, well, if I think I want to do this, I need to learn about it. And the more I learn about it, the more I really want to do it. And that just hasn't stopped for the last 40 years now. Yeah. Um, I always wanted to I'd be a pilot when I was a little kid. used to run out and hear the planes fly over. My mum would run outside and chase after me and bring me back inside. I always wanted to work somewhere along aviation. Way back then. Yeah. In the olden days, too, set up there. But, um, Olden days, yes. So I'm talking about tiger moth. So I first learned to fly on a tiger moth, which is made out of wooden yeah. <laughs> cloth. Um, yeah, there were books that, that all the boys used to read, like Beagles and that, and that really uh, got a lot of boys interested in aviation and girls interested in aviation. Yeah. What are the personal qualities that make a good pilot? There's lots of different things that can make a good pilot. Someone that can learn, obviously, and change. Also someone that can work as a team, but also being able to work on their own in that direction as well. But, uh, you have to be quite versatile to be a pilot, from my view, and behaviourally in a cockpit with someone else, being able to work with someone that you don't know and work as a team that you may never have met before, but you work for the same company. And that's important, it's not a solo career anymore. You're not the pilot. You're part of the team yeah. achieving a goal. And from my perspective in the team, what I'm interested in when I interview new pilots that come into my company or when I'm looking at retraining pilots that had a problem, I'm really interested in someone's ability to look past their own advertising. So whether or not they can actually recognise they've made a mistake and then do something about it as opposed to try to deny they've made a mistake in the first place. These days you've got to know your aeroplane, you've got to know the, the rules, the regulations, um, you, and by doing that you get confidence in your own ability, but having said that, confidence in your own ability, you still have to be a team player. Yeah. 
And these days it's CRM and it's using the resource, the captain uses the resources at his disposal in the cockpit. Yeah, there's an old, an old saying about a, a very average pilot uses really good skill and ability to stay out of trouble, but a really good pilot doesn't have to. They just stay out of trouble. <laughs> What is a common mistake that most beginning pilots make? <laughs> Let me count the ways. <laughs> if we're talking about career choices, uh, a, a mistake quite often is to be too narrow in your focus because it's a small industry and people that, that say, no, I only want to work here, don't tend to go very far. But someone that takes the opportunity when it's there and they grab that opportunity it might mean jumping in your car and driving to Mount Isa or, or, or going and working overseas, but you take the opportunity when it's there because someone else will if you don't. That's exactly right. A friend of mine, um, he was in a very, very good position to get a job before I did. Um, it was a job in Western Queensland, but he didn't want to, he said, lower his standard of living. Um, when my opportunity came to Mount Isa, I took it with both hands. Um, I've had a career in aviation a long, long time. He's still, I think, uh, retired from the bank. Uh,